everyone. This is Rogers from Blind Melon. I'm here with Ray Shasho on Interviewing with the Legends. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles Series 1. My new book featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know, available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Well, No Rain became one of the most indelible music videos of the 90s, or any era for that matter. Blind Melon's return is no exercise in nostalgia, with new members and new material defined by powerhouse harmonies. The band sounds both fresh and familiar. Blind Melon began in L.A., founded in 1990 by a group of Southern transplants, Roger Stevens, Brad Smith, Glenn Graham, all headed west from Mississippi, while Christopher Thorne hailed from Pennsylvania. The group's original and iconic vocalist Shannon Hoon arrived shortly thereafter from Lafayette, Indiana. The band gained some early buzz after Hoon sang on the Guns N' Roses single Don't Cry and the group's early demos landed into the hands of Capitol Records A&R, which resulted in a recording contract soon after. Nearly overnight, the band went from honing their distinctive blend of stripped down psychedelia in a sleepy old house to topping billboards charts and shredding through a set at Woodstock 94. But all too soon the clouds began to gather. Critics penned their 1995 follow-up soup um, and the time has been kind to that album. However, as the classic songs like Mouthful of Cavities have since found large appreciative audiences. Then, during a tour stop in New Orleans just a few weeks after the album's release, Shannon Hoon died from a cocaine overdose. Unable to find a suitable replacement for Hoon, the band officially disbanded in 1999. Blind Melon's revival began in Austin, Texas, when Smith and Thorne produced a record by singer-songwriter Travis Warren in 2006. Few singers possesses the range of someone like Hoon, and fewer still the raspy edge. Warren had it and more over. Warren had his own musical ideas which served to push the band into new territory. Then came a period of unprecedented creativity. Up late one night in uh, late 2016, guitarist Roger Stevens sent a sketch of a song to Warren. When he woke up the next morning, Warren had sent the track down with his vocals on it. Something clicked. That late night correspondence ushered in a period of prolific songwriting which continued into 2018. Best on the series of demos followed, a new album was afoot. Longtime Blind, Blind Melon fans will find much too appreciative here given that the each retain the essential elements of the band's distinctive sound. Graham's remarkable rolling drumming still anchors the band and the band's two guitarists, Stevens and Thorne, have long been able to finish each other's sentences musically which that's a result of the fact that there were probably many albums the band didn't get to make. Whatever the case, with all those unrealized ideas built up over the years, the resulting pressure burst the dam and the songs now flow freely. In some, hey, Blind Melon is back. Please welcome American guitarist best known for being a founding member of the alternative rock band Blind Melon, and also an attorney, Roger Stevens, to interviewing the legends. Hello, Roger. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Where, where, now, where are you calling from today? Uh, I'm in uh, Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of uh, Philly. Oh, right side out of Philly. Uh, as an attorney, I was going to ask you a question later uh, about your opinion. I don't represent you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, yeah uh, okay. <laughs> now, there's, a, there's a neighborhood in, in Pennsylvania, in PA, called the Kensington neighborhood. Are you familiar with it? Mm-hmm. What the heck happened I'm, in I'm that sure. area? <laughs> it, it, I don't know. I mean, Kensington is a, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a tragic place. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of suffering in this world right now, man. Oh, I my mean. goodness. So, um... I just I wish people the best. Yeah, the, the reason I bring it up, it's, it's on YouTube all the time. Somebody's giving updates every day and showing video of that neighborhood. And it's, it's tragic. Like you said, it's the worst. Well, when you, you know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't think that I think it's beyond the context of this interview. Right. But um, you know, I, I don't. I, I, I there's. Um, I think there's. You know, I mean, people are suffering. I, I don't know what else to say about it. You know, when 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 people are, are in economic under economic duress for decade upon right. decade, mm-hmm. you know, what do you expect? Yeah. It's just a shame they can't have somebody, you know, kind of clean it up for them and, and help them as far as housing and that kind of thing. You know, I, you know, I like to see, you know, tax money go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's our job, right? Right. That's the taxpayer's job. Exactly. So if, if, if you think that that's, that's correct, then, um, or if you agree with that, then I don't know. Make something happen. Figure out, figure out people who want to help these people. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I certainly, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm... I'm certainly conscientious, or try to be conscientious, and and, and aware of that. And I don't, I don't vote with my wallet. You know what I mean? Right, right. I just wanted to mention it since you were out there, you know, in Pennsylvania, and I'm sure you've heard all kinds of things. And you know, if there's anything you know us on the outside can do to help, just you know, let, let me know because it's just you know, it's tragic. Like you said, it's it's it's, it's a shame to see people suffer like that. It really is. You know? Yeah. Well. Look, I mean, you know, this 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 new breed of the pharmaceutical drugs that came through just oh my God. cleaned yeah. out a, <laughs> yeah. a swath of this country, you know. Um, so I don't know where that debt is going to be paid. Well, the fentanyl, you know, they add the fentanyl to heroin, and that's that's lethal, man. That's it's horrible. It really is. Fentanyl, fentanyl is, is 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 another beast entirely. Mm-hmm. You know? From what I understand, and it is uh, manufactured for a specific purpose, and boy, did they let that thing go! They really did. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they mm-hmm. you know, I, these, these pharmaceutical companies, and you, you got to imagine, man, that's a yeah, wow, yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I just wanted to bring that up real quick. All right, let's talk about Blind Melon. What's going on with the band nowadays? Um, well, you know, we've been re- recording songs, and we have a bunch of, I mean, we, we've got a bunch of uh, songs that are sort of 85% done, okay. beyond the ones, that, I think, the five or six that we've released. And we've been trying to get into a room to make this happen, mm-hmm. you know, and just things have just been, uh, it's been tough to do that you know, based on what we've dealt with in the last year. And I think, you know, some of these, the last maybe three or four that we released, um, you know, there's some of this stuff that's done remotely. And uh, with, you know, I've got a studio. I mean, everybody has, has, has recording equipment in their house. Right. So we can do something like that. And the trick is making it sound like uh, that's not how it's being done, I guess. Right. And I, I think we did a reasonably good job of that, but, I, you know, we, we, it's not what this band is. Mm-hmm. I mean, for us to make the right rec- the record that we can make, we got to get in the room. And um, there's, you know, there's reasons why I haven't been able to do that, but let's not just leave it that beyond what, you know, the reasons that everyone else knows about. Sure, sure. Well, Blind Melon's always been a great band. I've always been a fan of the band, you know, ever since the beginning. Me um, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I had to, you know, yeah. honestly. I mean, I, I love what we do, and, and it, it, it's kind of astounding to me, you know. I feel like um, there, there's definitely, I mean, I really learned to play guitar against Glenn's drumming mm-hmm. and Christopher's guitar playing. I mean, really, when I think about it, it's like I didn't start, you know, when we made our first record, I probably, I'd been playing about maybe five years the time at, you know, by the time we got done with our records. So, I mean, I wasn't like a fully developed player yet. And I, so I was learning that alongside Glenn, who was, you know, he was a much more advanced musician than, you know, than I was. Mm-hmm. It still is. Right. It still is to this day. But, um, so, um, you know, my formative years were spent against that sort of unusual playing. You know, he has a style, right? He's a signature to the sound of the band is Glenn, really, in my mind. And so, <clears throat> learning to play against that, um, yeah, it, it, there's a real chemistry, and we need to get in the room to make that happen. 
Now the the, uh, the current members, I you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You got you, Travis is on lead vocals, right? Yeah. It's you on lead on guitar, lead guitar. Uh, Christopher. Thor. Well, I mean, Christopher plays lead guitar too. You know? I mean, okay. I, I think I mean Christopher. We just have different styles, and okay. I mean their songs that we're both kind of playing the lead all the way through. It seems like I mean it's, it's a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, but, you know it's, that was you know something we had to be really aware. Of. Well, not aware of it. Uh, when we were starting out, you know, we were pretty busy in terms of the things that we were playing against each other. Right. Right. And um, so we kind of, I think as we come along, we've realized, oh, okay, you know, there's, it's, you know space is, is just as effective, if not more, than playing a note in most instances, right? So um, you have to think about that. And uh, yeah, so. You know, those those two guys, I mean, are, are, are critical to, to how, you know, I, I play. And Christopher plays a lot of solos. I, I don't think I'm the lead guitar player in the band. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say that Christopher might think that Christopher's played some of my favorite solos <laughs> we've ever recorded. So, um, I mean, I think maybe because the, I, I had the, I played the, the lead line on the, uh, on the, the song that most people know us for. Right. Maybe that's why I think that. Of course, but, you know, yeah. I, I guarantee on the song before that one or after that one on that record, yep. there's a Christopher Thorne solo that's ripping. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, Glenn's on drums and Nate, Nathan's on bass. Nathan Thorne. Uh, yeah, Tom. I see now, now Nate. You know, um, Nate joined us in, in 2000, um, I believe, 17, and. Um, Nate is, I mean, hands down, he's the best musician I've ever been around. Hmm. I don't know if you've looked at his Instagram page and watched him play the guitar, but uh, if you haven't, you should. Okay. Because he's a ma he's a master, and, right. and I'm, I'm I'm not. Uh, our music is trivial to Nate in a certain sense, I think, although he'd never say that or really even maybe consciously think that. But his gift is is beyond us, uh, to me. It's hard to sit on. It's hard to stand on stage and actually play the guitar. I feel like a fool. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> the dude didn't even own a bass. Wow. We called him to do it, huh. and he showed up three days later and knew the set better than any of us. That's incredible. Yeah. I have video of him sitting. You know, I'm standing next to this old grand piano that I have here in my studio. And I have video of him playing. You know, just playing. Mm -hmm. You know, classical stuff. You know, things that you know. He, he's he's a I think it's limited training, but he's a he's exceptional on several instruments, including <laughs> all the ones I play. So, um, yeah, that's great. Seriously, I mean, you really should go look at it. I'm not I'm not kidding. Oh, I will. He's I definitely good, will. He's, as, he's like he's as good as anybody. Yeah. But I'm talking finger style, like uh, you know, classical guitar, like, you know. Yeah. Really beautiful sort of gypsy style guitar, I guess. You would say like Django or whatever. Um, he can do, I mean, any of the standards, right? Any of the classic songs of the 20th century, he can mm -hmm. reharmonize and do, you know, fairly quickly. You know, so, we, we, we need you guys back on the road again, man. You know, there's not a lot of bands anymore. You know, you get a lot of female singers and, and dance music, and you know, I mean. I don't know, it seems more efficient to do it that way, right? <laughs> Jeez. <Like> people, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, we're, we're our, I mean, I think anybody who's sort of been around us for a while knows that we're our own worst enemy, you know? Yeah. Um, because uh, we're prone to things, you know, prone to excess and prone to, you know, craziness and conflict and things like that. And um, but man, when it gets right, I'll put it up there with just about anything. Oh sure. And you know, you guys rose to the top pretty quickly. You know, after that first album, you know, and that and that vi the No Rain video uh, definitely helped a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, you know, they, um, uh, you know, they, they. Uh, when I saw it, the very first time I saw the video, I had the same reaction everybody else did. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, yep, that's a big hit. It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, incredible. I, you know, we, we had the idea. I'll, I'll, Sam Bear was the director of that. He did, um, did a couple of other big videos for uh, acts on time, including that, the, the Nirvana video that just sort of you know blew the lid off of that whole scene, you know. Mm 
Yeah. But um, so I always said to Sam was use the album cover image of the B girl, right? And so we like our knowledge of what was going to happen. I mean, we kind of looked at a treatment, you know. But it was like because he had had that massive success with that video mm -hmm. and whatever. It's just kind of like, all right, we'll let him do it, you know fucking video we don't really care about this that much you mm -hmm. know so um <clears throat> so he did it we showed up like literally our part in this was we rolled up on tour out in the Simi Valley and walked off of our bus on that day that you see us out there in the field right it was gorgeous yeah gorgeous been sleeping on the bus all night uh from some gig you know long, we've been on the road for a long time by this point and they're not stopped we just, I mean, we woke up in that field, literally in our box and our bus. <laughs> I, got, I came off the bus, looked around, you know, oh, there's my guitar, there's an amp, go over and pretend like you're playing, <laughs> done, over, boom. We drive away and we go to the gig that night. And, um, you know, of course, we're out there and I think, you know, a few of us were, you know, we, we decided, you know, this is, you know, we're going to take ourselves to another planet. Um, you know, artificially and subversively, which we did. <laughs> so it was a really extraordinary day, you know. You, you guys were out so in that it field. Felt, it felt like what it looked like. You guys were out in that field. It reminded me of the Wizard of Oz when they were all out in the poppy field and they fell asleep, you know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Try standing around and those, around all of those B people. Uh -huh. you got to realize we're hanging around like, six, seven hours, you know, we're chatting yeah. up by the catering table and stuff, and they're all dressed like that, <laughs> and we, and, and, you know, whatever it is that we had, you know, done with ourselves had really s started to, you know, go into effect, mm -hmm. and the next thing I know, you know, Shannon's totally butt naked just walking around, <laughs> um, and there were these wild horses out there, oh, man. so we're getting up on them and trying to ride them, and we're, and, and you know, we're, yeah, we're, uh, we're on another planet, you know, by this point. And we literally just got, got in the bus and drove, walked on stage at a gig. That's great. Um, and it was it was amazing. And then, so, time forgotten. It was a fun day. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And then, um, that, that's that's one of my favorite places on the earth out there. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that landscape out there in California. Yeah. In the valley, you know, it's beautiful out there. Yeah. And so, um, we did a gig and then... About, I, I don't know, a few weeks later or whatever, I'm in my hotel somewhere, and, oh, the video is here. You know, look at it. Mm -hmm. And so we went and looked at it in, in somebody's room. You know, this is back when they would send it to you on a, on a VHS tape. Right. And, um, and we looked at it, and I was like, man, that's really something. That, that, that's like, it's exactly, I don't know, it's kind of like what I wanted to do, but it's way better <laughs> in terms of execution and, like, just, I don't know, con con conceptualization or whatever than I thought it would be. And so, um, yeah, and then, like, the next, I don't know, a few days later, I guess, MTV saw it, and then we got a call, and they said, oh, they're going to put it in heavy rotation, you know? And that was... Um, that's what happened, and it literally changed our lives overnight. So, some of the people that, that were in that video, I mean, the guy on the bench, was that, I mean, he looked like a kind of a homeless guy. Was, was that a real homeless guy, or was it an actor? Because he, he... Well, I think, uh, I have to confirm a story, but uh, no, no, that's not an actor. Not an actor, they yeah. Did that, they did that the day before. Mm -hmm. uh, like the film crew with Sam Bayer, like they went around and shot the B girl just all over downtown Los Angeles. Oh, okay. And you know, just hey, run over here. You know, like yeah. she's lost, right? She's running right. through downtown LA. You know, oh my God, she's talking to this homeless person. Right. This person threat. No, this person's actually sort of kindly. Uh, you know. <laughs> so, um, but that was, um, uh, uh, yeah. That, that happened. We didn't know about any of that. Like, that's, that's the stuff that I had no idea about until mm -hmm. I saw it. I didn't even know that happened. You know, that's definitely, it's one of the best shot music videos of all time, in my opinion. It really is. And so many people can identify with that video, you know. They, they, they you know, they, it's like, I found my crowd. This, these are my people. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's just a simple... Um, you know, it's a simple concept, right? Yeah. So, and I think one that everybody can relate to. Sure. 
Um, so yeah, you know, you find your people. Uh, and I, that, that, that is something that, despite what our recordings might sound like at times, it's something that you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I think is important. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have clarity of, 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 of an idea in a situation like that, especially if you're gonna spend, I don't know, I don't know if you're gonna spend on it. Right. Because I'll tell you, for that video, there are, I don't know, we did five or six or whatever, they're absolutely awful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. It's just a couple of them are good and the rest of them are shit. I, I, they just spent so much money doing it, you know, which was ultimately charged back to us, whatever. Um, well, it's going to so, be hard to top that one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no if, if, if that was the cost, right? Uh, but the total cost of all of our videos, you know, for the impact of that one was completely worth it. I can say that for right. sure. Sure. Like, I mean, if we could just roll up all of the costs and just have that one existing now, it would have mm-hmm. been, you know, we would have a perfect home run record. Yeah. Because, you know, video participants, which is what we really were, right? I mean, we weren't, um, and that was part of the problem, I think. So we didn't really know, like, we were so protective of our music. Like, you're mm-hmm. never going to come into the studio when we're, when we're writing or recording, like, you know, and most of us don't even want a producer there. We want an engineer. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, that's, that was kind of our attitude about it. We were super fierce about that. Right. Uh, to a fault, really. It, it, it hurt us, I think. We could have been more open to that. Mm-hmm. You know, a great producer would have been, you know, you know, I mean, we had great producers, right? But to have have a relationship with somebody that lasted over a course of several albums, you know, even even with, you know, the people that we worked with. But, um but, you know, to develop that where they're really listening to the compositions in terms of arrangements, um, you know, and what's important, you know, and really in every single, in every recording that matters, in my mind, all of the good ones, 85% of it is that top line lead vocal, right? Mm-hmm. If the lead vocal is not great, then the song is not great. Exactly. You can have killer lead guitar solos and I can play, you know, awesome riffage all day, but it won't be a great song. I agree with you. Unless that lead vocal is on. You know, Shannon Shannon had a a certain voice that no one else had either, you know? Yeah. He had had his own style and that's, you know, that's what made him so, so great as a vocalist. You know, Shannon's voice in the room and, and, you know, I don't, and this is not the fault of um, any of the people we worked with, really, uh, but we never captured it on tape, and I think it was somewhat elusive, because mm-hmm. when you sat in a room with him, and you just sat there with an acoustic guitar and sang you a song, right? it, bro- it would break your damn heart. I mean, it, his voice was, a, was was absolutely stunning in terms of it's like, uh, like I don't know what the proper uh, char- characterization is, but like the, the timbre or whatever it was for the whatever you say, you know, like the, it just, it was unusual, it had a raspy quality, right. kind of subtle, Yep. And, but like, especially in the beginning, you know, when he was in his full powers, you mm-hmm. know, um, so, um, the first time I ever met him, he sat down on the floor of this rehearsal, this garage, you know, that we had turned into a rehearsal space. And saying change, you know, from our first record. Mm-hmm. I was like, and I just, look, I, just, I, just I was like, that dude is a rock star. Yep. One hundred percent. Like there was never a doubt in my mind that we would be successful. And oddly, you know, and, and we went out on the road. It, it when our, our record was out for a year before No Rain really took off. You know, so <clears throat> I really identify with Shannon because I there's a. A couple of guys in my high school that reminded me of him. That I, you know, I used to hang out with what, guys like him. What do you think that they? What were they like? And what do you think he was like in that sense? Like, what were they like? They were a lot like characteristics. Oh, characteristics! They were yeah. just, you know, uh, freewheeling. You're really happy all the time. You know, just, uh, you know, always positive. Never got. I always got along with people. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, those two things are not correct. <laughs> but, but I will say this. He he is he was a he was an amazing, generous, warm and fun guy. Okay. Most of the time. Right. Right. And like people loved him. He's the guy that when he came to LA, he was famous in Hollywood after being there for about a week. Seriously. I heard about him before I met him. Really? 
and, and uh, yeah, I mean, he was, he just, he would show up at parties, and he's like, he's just, he had a magnetic personality mm-hmm. and a big mouth, he never shut up, <laughs> he was just a lot of fun, right? But, he also had a criminal record, you know, longer than my leg, yeah. and he, you know, he, he, he did, uh, you know, he had a, a temper, Really? It was it was it was substantial. Oh. I mean, I mean, I mean he. Um, I watched him get thrown in jail. I mean, multiple times for punching police officers. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, it's, I mean it's well documented. I mean, it's, you know, he. Um, it's not like it's a secret. Um, and. And he just got in a lot of fights, you know. He lost his temper. If he saw somebody, um, if he saw somebody, uh, for example, if he saw a security guard beating up a kid in the front row of right, the show, and right. this back, the shows were crazy back then. Yeah, you got to understand. It's like those, those shows; they they weren't like you know. There wasn't all kinds of like professional crowd control techniques and stuff going on. They just opened the doors and threw kids up against a barricade, and there was yeah. a lot of pressure up there. People were passing out and stuff. That's people horrible. Were quick, you know, and of course, you know, and that's when people were getting passed over the top all the time. That's crazy. And people getting on the stage and you know, it's fucking dumb shit. Whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That's what they were doing. I was just trying to get through the show. Yeah. But um, uh, but if he saw the security guards, you know, he thinks, like, oh, you're picking on some kid or that kid in the movie. He'd jump right out. I saw him hit a guy with a cast iron mic stand, dive off, and he's getting punched, you know, by the security guards. He's mm-hmm. just giving it to them, you wow. know. And, and you have to understand, Shannon was an all American wrestler in high school. Really? It's like a like a black belt, like a you know. I didn't know a, that. Huh? I always tell people he would have been in the MMA <laughs> if he were around today because he was like he was kind of good at this stuff. I didn't know that. Wow. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? I never saw him get his ass kicked. I'll say that. Wow! Um, How about that? And so um, he just, uh, you know, he would, he would just go off, and you know, there was this time we were in, we were in Memphis, and right when the record really started to hit, you know, we're sort of close to the area that three of us are from, you know, and we're doing this gig, and mm-hmm. my family had come up, my dad, you know, from Mississippi. My dad's a lawyer, you know, like an old school, like Mississippi lawyer. Oh, yeah, you know? oh, yeah. And he's backstage drinking whiskey and hanging out, you know, and, and and that show was one of the most oversold, insane shows we ever had. And it just got out of control, and it was in the, the place was too small, and um, yep. he, hit some, he hit one of those security guards with a mic stand, and then they just went at it, and then, you know, then the cops came, and... Uh, they were looking for him. We had the show ended, right? So, like, but they couldn't even get back to where mm-hmm. they were. So, we're right. back in the dressing room. And, like, I'll never forget this because our bus is outside the back door of the dressing room. We're trying to figure out, all right, are we going to get out of here? Like, Shannon is literally hiding underneath this old <laughs> uh, ping pong table in the dressing room. It's kind of back in the dark, sort of, and he's hanging, he's just under the table because we know that he's going to get arrested. Oh, man. And so, my dad and the lawyer, there, and I'm like, what should we do? <laughs> he's like, man, and he looks at me, he says, well, you get that bus across the border to Mississippi, we'll be fine. <laughs> um, and that's precisely what we did. Man, I, I hate to get uh, arrested in Mississippi. <laughs> uh, no, it's the best place for me to get arrested because people know me. Well, now. yeah, you, but not me. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, give me a call. You let me know. <laughs> Man, oh man. I know where he's coming from, though, because when I went to concerts, um, you know, I, I've seen thousands of shows, and really? I had a fight. Why did you do that? I had a, I had a fight uh, at the Paul McCartney uh, in Wings show when they did Wings Over America back in, uh, like, 75, something like that, 74. Oh, my God, dude. I was just, listen, I'm sitting here right now. Um, I was just thinking about that song and that that record I, I love them that's one of my earliest musical memories is I, that right really huh but uh, you know i my, my i went with my cousin and my cousin for some I mean, reason i wasn't there i mean i'm talking about hearing on the radio on the ra- know, yeah like, yeah like, oh yeah oh, oh yeah <laughs> awesome Awesome, man. Yeah. 
一段。You got, I love you, that record. Do a cover, dude. Do do some covers, man. That, that's great. You know what? Honestly, I've I've, I've done I've I've recorded probably 150 cover songs. Really? <laughs> in the last in the last year and a half, yeah. I'd love to hear them. Just everything. Um, okay, I'll send them to you. I'd love to hear them. Literally, what I did was I just set up a mic here in my studio. Right. And. Um, and I just sit in front of a mic with an acoustic guitar and a video camera, so I record the video, but then I get the audio off of the, you know the good mic. Or, um, but I was still like putting the system together, uh, so some of them are, don't sound so good. Yeah, can I send it to this number? I'll send it to you. Uh, let's see. Let me let me give you another number. All right. Well, you can give it to me off air. Oh uh, yeah, well, yeah. Or I, or I can give it to uh, your manager. I can give him my email address, and you can send it to my email. Why don't you just send me? Uh, well, look. All right. Do you want to tell me your number right now, and I'll send you a, a text. Okay. How about how about my uh, my email? It's probably easier, I, more more cleaner, I think. Um, it's easier for me to. Okay, I can do that. All right, my the, the, the uh, let me give you this email address. Um, interviewing the legends at gmail.com Hey, look, I wasn't going to call you or anything, you know, for other business. Look, see, I feel like you're just being weird now. You don't want me to have your number. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, interviewing with the legends. Yeah, interview, uh, interviewing the legends um, at gmail.com Oh, at, the, at gmail.com. Yeah. At gmail. Okay, got it. Yeah, if you can send it there, well, it's, just, it's you know, clean. I'm just saying, I'll, I'll send it to you there. Okay, yeah, I'd love to hear it, man. I, it, it's yeah. just cleaner when you send it to, uh, you know, email and stuff. Uh, yeah, you just tell me what you want to hear. I'd like, yeah, I'd like I, I send link. I just send a link to my Dropbox folder, right? Okay. I text people these, and this, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. And um, do you want do you uh, want me to do you want me to uh, publish any of those songs as far as you know put them on. Uh, on my websites or anything like that, or you can, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, I don't know. You can look at them and and you tell. But, but you know, if there's something you like, you better look at them first. Okay, right? you I'll may check look it out. at them and say, "I'm not putting this anywhere near my website." Right. right. That could be your. Because here's the thing, I you know I never really sang that much or tried to sing that much. You got a good voice. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I taught myself to sing like this. Mm -hmm. I taught, and I never learned other people's songs, right. right? Necessarily, I didn't learn a bunch of cover songs when I was a kid. Like I'd learn, you know, okay, we're gonna do a band set somewhere, or my high school band. So I need to learn five or six cover songs. I might do that, but I never sat down and learned the entire Jimi Hendrix catalog or whatever. Right, <laughs> you know what right, I mean, right. I probably should have. But I, after having tried to write songs, I kind of did it backwards in a way. Mm -hmm. I tried to write songs for whatever thirty years or whatever, and then. I learned how everybody else did it, <laughs> yeah. and it was kind of profound. Yeah, you know, in a way, um, you know, like Elton John or somebody, right? Um, who is my like I think maybe my my second favorite singer and really hard to sing, right? You know, if you did so, if, if you did a solo album with just cover tunes, people would love it, man. I mean, they're... I'm already doing it. Are you? Oh, right, there you go. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I've got a track over. I'm working on a track right now. There you go. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send it to you. You can check it out. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah, right. we'll definitely promote it when it comes out. Yeah. yeah. I want. I want to talk to you just a little bit. When Shannon, Shannon passed away, that it's kind of ironic because earlier today I, I interviewed Peter Albin from Big Brother and the Holding Company. And we talked about Janis. Oh, wow. We talked about Janis Joplin and her and her problems. Man, she was really, really had a hard time with drugs, big mm. time, big, big time. You know, from way back, and you know, it might have stemmed back from high school and, and all that stuff. Uh, I, I realized yeah. when, when, when you were on tour with Shannon, you actually had a uh, a guy uh, like a counselor, right, kind of watching over him. To try to keep them in check. We tried that. Yeah. We tried that for a while, but you know, listen. I've learned this. You, you can you can do interventions and stuff, and we we you know right. We approach things like that, but really none of it sticks until the person comes around. 
Yeah. They have to come to it on their own. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, and I know that I'm, you know, I'm not an expert, and, and, and that many experts would disagree with me on this. I'm sure. So for that, I apologize, but it's just been my experience, you know. And um, you know, until you deal with underlying causes, right? In terms of mental health, right? The, 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 the drugs are the drugs are a symptom. Yeah. You know, the drugs are a symptom. Mm-hmm. Now, there there may be some some you know. I assume that addictions, you know, have have physical component too that I don't know anything about, right? I'm not a doctor. Mm-hmm. I don't know which drugs are physically addictive or not. Right. You know, I've enjoyed them all, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'd like to do more of them at some point, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> you know, but, but I don't, right? Because yeah. you, you kind of get the fact that they're dangerous. You right. Know, get fun and, but that some people, you know, and Shannon was one of those dudes, right? And, you, and people... I think people intuitively know this, right? They, 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 they come along and they're, they're young and they're out, you know, mm-hmm. having fun with their friends and people are getting crazy and people do things and they do it once or twice and sometimes they do it more, whatever, yeah. but you can look around and you'll know the person who's in peril, right? Yeah. And, when, and, and, and just because there's a commitment there to, to really going to another level that's, that's not... Um, that's not the norm, I think. Now, Shannon had that, and he, he did it like that for a long time to such a degree that it made me think he was invincible. Yeah. You know, because he was. He was, he was healthy, sort right. of, like, active, very active, very, like, strong, you know, physically active and athletic person. Right. He wasn't a wasting away drug addict. Exactly. You know what I mean? There are moments where he might have gotten down 10 pounds or so, mm-hmm. but that wasn't where he was when he, he died, you know? Um, and he got caught with the, uh, the sort of he hadn't been doing it for a while mm-hmm. right and then he did it once and that was it uh, what was it was and it his body his body was not ready for it right, right. And he, he went back this old way <laughs> uh, yeah. right off of that I guess I mean, was it do you have any idea if it was a bad batch or was it an overly strong no. batch you know, mm-hmm. Cocaine will give you a heart attack if you take a Xanax with it. Yeah, that's true. That's what happened. I'm sure at my age, if I took cocaine now, I might have a heart attack, you know? That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if you tell your heart to do two opposite things at once, right. um, uh, then, yeah, it might freak out. <clears throat> yeah. Tried to give up. Tried to cash it in. Yeah. You guys could have gone so far, you know, so much further. Uh, if, if, if Shannon was yeah, still the there. Yeah, blind Mountain record was going to be amazing. Yeah. I can tell you that for sure. Um, uh, this band had, you know, had enormous late potential. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Shannon and Shannon had other things he could have done, too. Sure. Obviously, obviously going, you know, a filmmaker, you know, and um, he was obviously... Uh, had another side to him in terms of... I mean, listen, there's stuff... That you know, there's I, I know fifty Shannon Hoon songs that I don't know if anybody's ever going to hear. Mm. You know, because I don't know if they're recorded. Yeah. Um, but I know them. I mean, I have I lived with them for like a year in Hollywood, right? When a lot of this stuff, when we were just starting, right? And so Shannon was the kind of guy. He would sit around with a guitar all the time, right? And just sing. Yeah. You know, I think cover songs. He could sing a few really, really well. You know, he could sing like a, a John Fogarty vocal, like oh, cool. blow your mind. Oh, he's a natural. I mean, you'd, you'd be like, this yeah. guy's as good of a singer as John Fogarty. Yeah. He's a great singer, right? I believe it. Yeah, I probably better. Probably better. I don't know. I know he's, he's. I mean, I don't know. That's apples and oranges, but they're both yeah. elite on, at the highest level. Mm-hmm. I think. In terms of expressiveness, I'm not talking about uh, gymnastics, operatic. Any of that? It, it's where are you a conduit, mm-hmm. an appealing conduit of, of the, of, of the, and you're, you're you're funneling out the trials and tribulations and victories of the human soul <clears throat> through your voice. Yeah. And Shannon had a direct was a direct conduit to that. Yeah. 
you know, I'm I'm a purist, rock and roll guy. I, you know, from way back, I was I was a, uh, actually a top forty disc jockey back in the seventies. And uh, uh, right, right, but, but 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 there is no such thing as a rock and roll purist because rock and roll itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. An abomination. It's a bastard child of something else, right? I mean, <laughs> well, you know, well, compared to well, what you got today, maybe I can say. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't know. I hear I hear things like like. It's just different, you know. Like I, I, sometimes I don't like the production as much. No, I don't. I don't either. I like simple. I hear songs. Right. And I'm like that's a that's the on Apple record. I agree with last you. Year, it's absolute masterpiece. Yeah, I agree. But you guys, um, your generation, that generation was the last of rock and roll of anything that right. resembled rock and roll. That was it. Right. Yeah, that, it was the last. That was it. The era of yeah, dudes sort of like. Dudes who were skinny or trying to be skinny with guitar. Yeah, exactly. Long hair, <laughs> you know. Right. It's a, yeah, yeah. That was it, man. Well, and, yeah, I, I'm no Luddite, though. I'm, I'm always looking for um, that same feeling, and I do believe it exists. I hope it. I hope and, so. And I hope here's so. Here's the thing, though. That music, and the music, and it's analog, you know, current, currently. It's not directed at us, right? Mm -hmm. it's, we're not the audience. We never have been. The audience is the people that we were right. at the time that we were at age. That's what it is. Yeah. So and that's how nostalgia gets created, right? Because a new uh, uh, and these people, you're the fans of an era, right? Yeah. And you age into nostalgia for right. that era. I know. <laughs> and you don't bring along the current era with you. And yeah. I, I do the same thing. Yeah. That's fine. Because yeah. it's music of, of our youth, it's important. It's like it's a foundation, you know, of our lives in a way. I, but, I don't have a problem with that. Aren't, aren't, you, aren't you blown away? I mean, we, we had some, you know, tragedies back in the 60s, including Jim Morris and Janice, Jimmy, but aren't you blown away by all the uh, y y y suicides, you know, from the 90s Len bands? Lennon? How about Lennon? <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, I mean, that totally blew my mind. That was, that was so devastating. A murder. I mean, but, that's... That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. To me, the Beatles are kind of up above everybody else. Right. On a much higher plane than any of these. And then there's the Rolling Stones, and then there's everybody else. Yeah. That's how I see. Right. But um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the Beatles transcended the genre. I think. I mean, they they, they have you know they have songs that you know, belong in the, the sure the short the short list of 20th century great songs. Yeah. Yes. You know. But like you said, being a purist, you got to go way back to, you know, Muddy Waters and uh, Hal and Wolf and, uh, you know, of course, Little Richard and Chuck yeah, Berry. Yeah, I mean, what about the people who nobody ever heard? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what yeah. about the people who never got recorded? I know. Who are from, who are the, who are the, who are the, who are the ancestors, the people who live where I'm from? Exactly. Exactly now right. That. Yeah. Now, if you want to, now, if, if, you know, obviously they're, you know, all of this stuff has come to to, to fruition, but uh, or to you know to the forefront of the public consciousness. But I've known about it since I was a kid. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, you know, just as a I guess as a white person, I mean, you look around, you're like, this is not fucking fair. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. You're hundred percent right. Yeah. How about Memphis Minnie? She she was born in Mississippi, I think, and and uh, yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. The house that I grew up in. A stone is a stone's throw from the birthplace of Chester Arthur in Town Wolf. Oh wow! You know, really? I could literally, I could literally walk across um, a pasture into that shack, and there was a tree growing up in it when we were kids. And nobody knew. I mean, nobody cared. Nobody really knew what it was or whatever. You know, eventually. And 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 I have to say, the the irony is this, of, of this situation. I and mean, I don't know. It's sort of complicated in ways that I hadn't really thought about and I guess until the last couple of years but it's like you know these English bands came and bounced up appreciated it and yeah. then sold it back to us yep. you know when we didn't care about it yeah it's true and, and so now um, if you look at you know now in Mississippi they have a lot of historical mm -hmm. uh, markers and there's the uh, there's the, the sort of trail that they've memorialized going down through there, and you know his uh, house has been fixed up, and it's now one of those historical landmarks, which is cool, I guess. You know, but it, I mean, 
I'm, I, I always look at that. There's a BBC video of Alan Wolf um, from the earth, from the era of, you know, I think the early 60s. I think he's introduced by Mick Jagger and when they're they're like babies, right? They yeah. look like little kids. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. You know, they're, they, I mean, he was much of a man, right? Yeah. He was he was an incredible performer, and um, so uh, yeah, that was just kind of astounding. Uh, so much history from Mississippi, man. You know. Listen. Yeah. Faulkner. <laughs> you know, I grew up in Faulkner country, really. Yeah. And pe- there are people down there where I'm from who knew him. Hmm. Or, you know, who, who remember him. That's so right? cool. Because he would come to old people. He would, he would come down uh, to the town I'm from, from Oxford, and, mm-hmm. and to, because there are moonshiners down there that he liked. And, and so he would come down and just get completely hammered and go deer hunting. Um, he loved to hunt down there. You know, I could have started my radio career in Meridian, Mississippi. But I ended up going to, uh, starting in Florida and uh, Sebring instead. My, um, I spent a lot of time in Meridian growing up. Really? My my aunt and uncle lived there, we, so we would go down there. It's about forty five minutes away, and um, you know it's a bigger town than where I'm from. The place where uh, Brad and I are from is more rural, you know. But um, I can't say that word rural. It's a hard word to say. <laughs> um, and so. Um, I have another, uh, someone else who is from there is um, Pat Sansone, mm-hmm. who is the bass player of Wilco. And um, so we all grew up together. Pat and Glenn, our drummer, played in a band sort of in high school with Pat, who's now in Wilco. Right. Um, you know, in terms of that generation of you know, people coming along. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was a little bit younger than Glenn. You know, so a couple of years younger, and you know, at that age, two years matters, right? So <clears throat> I didn't know him that well. I knew him better when we were five and on the gym team together. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite blues guy that came from Mississippi, born in Mississippi, he's got the same birth date as mine, is Elmore James. Elmore James, though. Oh, yeah, I love Elmore James. Yeah. He's so nasty. Yep. Right? I mean, he's just like, he's just the most, like, Aggressive, kind of. I love his playing. Great side player. Um, but Robert Johnson. I mean, what do you do? I mean, he's, oh yeah. Those recordings are, are. I mean, I just feel lucky that we that humanity has them. Because can you imagine if that guy hadn't been recorded? Unbelievable. I mean, he put the blueprint down for he did. all of it. For all of it. And it's just kind of like wow, you know. Those whatever twenty nine, I think it's twenty nine thirty songs. They hadn't been captured. I don't know what it would have sounded like. I guess there were other people doing it, but you know, the the, the recording seemed to be a little later. You, you um, know, you know, there could there could be an argument for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Maybe should have been in Mississippi. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, no shit. Why is it in Cleveland? It is in Cleveland, right? Or yeah. Baseball? I can't remember. Yeah. I haven't been. Yeah. I haven't been, nor have I been invited. I've never been there either. I have not been there yet either. Um, I, you know, I disagree with some of their practices, and I, you know, but, uh, you know, but. You um, know what? If it's still there yeah. in a few years, I'll be amazed. Yeah. But you know what? It's the only thing we got for rock and roll. There's, you know, there's nothing else really that. Right, but. Who are they going to induct from the class of 2021? Yeah. You know what I mean? Taylor yeah, Swift. Changed, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it should have been, you know, the, 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 the Contemporary Music Hall of Fame. Exactly. Or something like that, right? Because rock and roll has been open, yeah. has been, has been uh, displaced yeah. in a certain sense. You know, I mean, I still play sort of rock and roll songs because I like it, you know? Yeah. But I'm not a fool. I mean, I look around and I don't think that I'm making innovative music necessarily. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The people who are pushing forward and getting new sounds, new recordings, you know what I mean? Yep. I'm doing the same thing Led Zeppelin does. Yeah. Or did, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not, not particularly innovative. I might do that and work within that framework in an innovative way, maybe. But, you know, the, the boundaries that I'm working within, and I think about this a lot, and I know that artists think about this a lot and sometimes they try to break out of it to varying success 
success, right? Degrees of success. You mm -hmm. see some people like, oh, I'm going to make a modern record. Right. Like a, you know, quote unquote, older, you know, heritage act or whatever. I'm going to make a modern record. I'm going to update to what, I don't know. I think ACDC did it right. That's just who you are, you know? It's just who you are, right? And just get old, just, uh, and the stone. Just get old being that, and, yep. you know, we'll come back to you eventually. Yep. You know, um, if, you know if something else happens that it distracts us for a few years, I'm, I'm speaking from the perspective of the listening public, right? Mm -hmm. We might come back to you if you were particularly great, you know? Yeah. But I think that's what it is. Rogers, here's a, here's a song that I, here's a, a question I ask everybody, and I get some really interesting answers, and it's kind of ironic, because it, it's what it is, it's a Field of Dreams wish, and today, they're playing the Field of Dreams game, the Yankees and, and Chicago White Sox at Field of Dreams, which is really cool, that's going to happen, I think at 6 o'clock, in a few minutes. Uh, oh, I saw that. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I think that's awesome. I hope, some, I hope somebody makes a bunch of money off of it because, I mean, I guess that's what they're trying to do. Well, they're charging a lot of money for tickets. I know that. I bet they are. <laughs> I bet. Really? Yeah. I thought they were doing it just out of the love of the game. No. Yeah, I, I do love that baseball inspired that sort of sentences. I think it's cool. I think it's cool that they're doing it because baseball needs a, a boost. You know, they, they've gotten a little out of hand from the... Man, I saw the Phillies this year. Listen, I had the greatest... Greatest uh, baseball game experience I've had ever. Really? You know, going to a pro game. Yeah. We went this year and uh, we saw walk off Homer um, with the most beautiful sunset. I mean, mm -hmm. really, I'm looking, you know, the Phillies Park is really great, actually. Yeah. You know, like, like you know. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes people say there's not a lot of nice shit in Philly. Well, I point them to this park. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> it's a really great baseball field, you know. And, um, you know, they got the, the mascot there. It's a lot of fun. For yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Um, so we watched that. And, and But, you know, I, I haven't been to a lot of pro games, you know. But um, it, was, it was really fun to watch and to see that happen and to feel that energy, you know, after this last year and a half. And this is right before, okay, you know, things got weird. It seems again. So yeah, you know we got uh, the Phillies uh, preseason exhibition is here in Clearwater in Florida. They, they, oh, do you, have you gone to see them? I have not seen the Phillies. I've seen the Orioles. I've seen the Pirates, the Yankees, and some other teams, but I haven't seen the Phillies yet. They guys got great beaches in Clearwater, man. I've been down there before. Yeah, yeah I'm only about a half an hour from Clearwater, south. Yeah, you know I go to see. Ranch or uh, what's it called? It's the place where they shot the Truman Show. Um, it's called um, yeah, um, Seaside or something. I, I don't know. It's one of these like manufactured communities. Right. It was the, one of the. It was the first one, you know. Um, and my uh, my older brother has a spot down there, so I'm down there. It's it's right near Panama City. I know that. Okay. You're a little bit farther south then, huh? Yes, I am. Yeah, Panama City's more towards going like towards uh, I don't know Tallahassee, you know, way up there, Pensacola, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm south. I'm, I'm about I don't know uh, thirty minutes from Tampa, south of Tampa. Yeah, Seaside. Okay. Seaside's the place you're talking about. Seaside. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I go there like sort of. I've been there probably ten times. Huh. Uh, and I, you know, we would go growing up. I. I uh, we go to Gulf Shores and stuff. But one time, we went to uh, Clearwater. Right. Um, for like a family vacation when I was a kid. And I was like, ah, oh, it's beautiful down here. You know, when the Gulf is right, it's great. Well, yeah. Right now, we got this stupid red tide, which is killing killing everything. I've been reading about that. Is that is it's, that is that it's still ridiculous. going on? Oh, it's horrible. I wish they'd figure out what the hell to do to stop it. You know, it's. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah, my brother. My brother's a serious fisherman. He's got a for real boat down there, and right. we, we go out twenty miles off, you know, around there. And yep. So that's a bummer. It's a cool place. It, it, it's beautiful around here. It really is, you know. It is. They got beautiful yeah. beach there, man. We, we've got uh, Siesta Key Beach, which is one of the best beaches in the country. That's about ten minutes from me, you know. So mm, nice. And there's a lot of rockers that move down here too, you know. A lot. There's. Oh a, yeah. Brian Johnson's got a house here, and uh, uh, Mick Jagger just bought a house for his uh, girlfriend about 10 minutes yeah. from me. Yeah. So that, yeah. Chai, maybe I should get a house for my girlfriend there. I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> just 
kidding. Listen. We got a lot of attorneys here, too. My wife here is this interview. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, Rogers, here's the, here's the question I was going to ask you. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? John Lennon. Oh, good. Yeah, John Lennon. I mean, I'm sorry to be so obvious. Or, you know, I don't know. I, I might, like, I, I, maybe I should be smarter than that. <laughs> Tell you what, if I could, if there was somebody that would be forced to, like, be in a room with me and have to play with me, <laughs> I'd pick Elvin Jones. Yeah. Um, you know, because I really, I listen to drummers more than anything, mm -hmm. I think, in right. terms of my guitar playing. Right. And I love being in a room with a great drummer. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like so I've had a lot of great, I've had a lot of great times because I get to play with Glenn, you know. But, you know, somebody that both Glenn and I agree on and somebody that we both saw at the end of his life is Elvin Jones. Right, right. And honestly, that was like seeing, that's like seeing Jimi Hendrix, you know, or, or, or like some, Ma or Clapton or something, like the, the apex of the instrument, you know, in terms of the genre. And those, those Coltrane records that he's on with that, you know, the famous John Coltrane Quartet um, yep. were tremendously influential on, you know, so, like some of the, like, how the rhythm section connected and blind melody. I mean, we're not that good, obviously. We're not even close. You know, but we listened to it a lot together. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool, like how that flows. And, you know, so, um, you know, I would love to play with somebody like that. You know, I, I, I heard you were kind of a jazz buff, too, right? You like jazz? I mean, I wouldn't say that. I'm yeah. not like a, I just, and, and I don't, like, I'm not, like, an obsessive fan of anything in particular. Right. If I happen to hear it, and I, and I like it, and I'll, I'll really pay attention to it, and I'll right. listen to it, and whatever, but I don't go and, like, then I, but that doesn't cause me to go out and seek that person's catalog out or something, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. I don't know, I just, I just pick it up where I can, and, um... And that feel is, is really important. I, I'm not a jazz guitar player buff, mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. I like certain instruments in jazz more than others. Like, there's, like I don't necessarily, you know, I don't have a West Montgomery record. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I do have a Django Reinhardt record. In fact, I have all of them. <laughs> That's just completely contradicting what I said. <laughs> but um, what I just said. But the reason why I have that is because you know, when we got our record deal, Capital released, you know, had at the time released a Django Reinhardt box set that was like all of it, you know. Yeah. And they're like, you can go and grab whatever you want out of that cabinet, you know, fresh young talent. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm going to go and get all of it. <laughs> you know, and that was one of the things. And right. um, I was really, uh, really into that for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I love you know, the saxophone jazz and, yeah, and sometimes, too. you know, I mean, obviously Miles Davis, but, yeah. um, yeah. yeah. To me, it's more about the answer. I love Bill Evans' records. Yep. I know that. Mm -hmm. And I love Thelonious Monk. Oh, yeah. I like, I love his, I love, there's a, there's a record called Monk Alone. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of, it's a compilation of him just, I, I think some outtakes from when he was on, I forget which label, uh, I think it, it I forget which label he's on at the time. But it's really, it's almost like outtakes, right? He's sort of winging through some of his famous compositions and then other things like um, hymns, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that he remembers from church, which I can, you know, really relate to because, I mean, I learned, like most people, you know, who made these records in the South, <laughs> we learned music in church, sure. right? Sure. Whether, whether or not you stuck around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stuck around church after you got it. But I'm telling you, the music I heard in church and learned music from sounds like Rolling Stones songs. I agree with you. I agree 100%. I, I've heard some vocalists. I will cherish the old rugged crow and our trophies left that laid down. Right? Like, those, those, I know all of those songs. Man, you gotta start. Memorized. you got to start singing more. I've recorded more. a bunch of them. Yeah, you got to start singing more. I mean, I'll send you know. that one. I, I've recorded a bunch of these hymns. Really? Because um, I like I got I actually got the Methodist hymn. I, I went to a Methodist church growing up, so you know, and there's the songs. There, there's a lot of them there in, throughout denominations. You know, so um, they're all one, four, five progressions or some variations.
Asian, and yeah. uh, they're like blues songs. Yeah, they are. And we had this guy in our church um, who was there every Sunday. I don't know what the hell he did otherwise. Old guy, uh, his name was Ben, I believe, and I can't, I mean, I'm going to have to get his name because I, I watched him every week mm-hmm. for an hour straight because he would just start, he would just wing it. And so, like, you know, the, the, the preacher called out, you know, Old Rugged Cross or Blessed Assurance or something, right. you know. He had he had something in mind. He was like, you know, he would he, and he would do so sort of he would sort of solo into it under the preacher. Yeah. You know, sort of find the key like loosely. And and so the church, you know, would, would sing and there was and the choir directors at the front hold the meter, right? She was she was directing it like we were conducting an orchestra. Right. With her arm. Man. And um, and so he's kind of watching that, but playing with it loose, and it, it was really cool. You know, I don't know. I just thought it was good. Yeah. And my mother was, you know, sort of the lead soprano in the choir. Really? Huh. Um, yeah. And, and so, um, you know, she had an extraordinary voice. Hmm. She still does. And um, so, I don't know. I would. That's how I learned music, or at least contemplated it, I guess. Well, you know, a lot of sure. rock, a lot of rock stars started in in the church. You know, uh, that's where this, 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 yeah. this, this, there is no rock and roll without this music. No, no. I'm talking southern gospel hymns. Yep. Country sort of country that's music. Right. A little bit of that. Um, a little bit of of, of um, I mean, obviously the stuff that came from the fields mm-hmm. by 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 people who were not free. Right. And um, so it comes from there, and that it's in itself comes from another continent, in, in, in a sense, you know, there are elements of it, you know, so um, that's how we ended up with this, and you get somebody like me, who's oblivious to all of those things, as a young person, and comes along in that world, and hears it, and it's on the radio, so yeah. Yeah. you hear the Rolling Stones on the radio when you're five years old in Mississippi. Yeah, you know, I'm glad we talked and about. You have no idea that it that it comes that it loops right back to your backyard. You have yeah. no idea. I'm glad we talked about Mississippi today because, you know, you, you don't realize how how many great musicians and, and voices and history and all that came from that state. Tennessee yeah. Williams is from Columbus, Mississippi. Unbelievable. Which is my hometown. Yeah. Which is Fifteen minutes from my hometown. Yep. I mean. Uh, you know, Faulkner obviously won the Nobel Prize in literature. Is is you know, I mean, he is easily in the the less than a handful of the really like the, the profound American writers. It's complicated yeah. as that is, and complicated as it is to to contemplate Faulkner in the modern world. You know, but there is no denying his greatness. Um, so um. Nor you know Tennessee Williams. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't have had Elvis if it wasn't for Mississippi. <laughs> Elvis, absolutely. I mean, Elvis is just a, Elvis is just an earlier version of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I mean, except he was way better at it, you know, and way more gifted. But but he was a white kid in in in, in you know yeah in, in sort of rural Mississippi, you know, and where he's from, Tupelo is a bigger town. Yeah. Where I'm from, like I'm from about 45 minutes south of Tupelo. Okay. From a much smaller community. Have you seen his house? Where Tupelo he was... is the big city. Have, have you seen... been there? Yeah, have you? Yeah. It looks like many houses that I knew growing up. <laughs> now, not ones that I lived in, because I, I wasn't, you know, in that economic, you know, um, uh, strata or whatever you say. But you know, I mean, my family was, I guess, well to do by. You know, standards in a yeah, sense. Right, right. But that's somewhat complicated, but, but it, you know, in terms of our living conditions, because I, the, you know, there are people in the dirt poor shacks a quarter right. mile from exactly. where I grew up then. Exactly. Yeah, my my wife my wife's from Kentucky originally, so she's got there's areas like that as well. The, there's an area called Fishtown, which the, these houses are on stilts, I guess, over the Ohio River. Mm. You know, they're <clears> very poor people, yeah. and you know. Yeah, they yeah, coal, mine, I mean, coal mining. Uh, I mean, there, there's. I mean, you, you haven't seen abject poverty. At least you've gone to places that you haven't been, like this. You know? Yeah, but all and, the great, um, all the great blues players came from places like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. 
Yeah, I mean, unless they migrated north, right? You know, I, We're right. covered up there. Exactly. Rogers, anything else you need to promote? Or uh, you guys think you're going to hit the road uh, anytime soon? What do you think? I, I mean, I'm hearing the spring of 2022. 2022, okay, cool. Um, because, you know, the, I think uh, I think things are getting, I, I think there's obviously some escalating risk here uh, I know. right now. I know. And especially where I'm from, right? I yeah. mean, Mississippi is in dire straits right now. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, we have to uh, sort that out. We, we, but we have something else that we're contemplating before that that's right. a little bit more interesting, I think, um, which is, you know, involves, you know, finishing this record, mm -hmm. but doing it in sort of a public-facing way. So, um, uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in an extraordinary setting. Yeah. <laughs> and, fil and filming it. Awesome. That's that's what that's up. You know, we got we got a plan afoot. So we're when do you think that, that right now? When do you think that'll be happening? When or completed or whatever? Um, that's going to be. You know, we're shooting for. Um, we're shooting for late fall. Late fall. Year. Okay. We'll circle or we'll you know, circle this, back. This is a place where where uh, weather matters. You know. We'll circle um, back then and, and but not but not in terms of necessarily in terms of of cold. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't know. These are all clues. Yeah. To nothing. To something. Right. Maybe nothing. Well, we miss you guys. Okay. Yeah. Well, we I, miss I, you I guys. Miss, you know, I miss other humans, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, you know, I was out and about, rambling around. Yeah. Over the past few months, you know, all vaccinated and thinking. Yep. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm. You know. Impervious to <laughs> uh, once again invincible. I can just do all the crazy shit I used to do. I know. I was feeling the same way. You know, I was, we were all we're all vaccinated and things were looking good. And now the variant is coming, and now they're talking about booster shots and all kinds of stuff. So I'm good, man. Give it to me. Yeah, me uh, too. I'll take I, it. I, also, because there's a part of me, you know, like I love that South Park uh, show. You know, the, 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 the pandemic special. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit like Cartman, where where he's like, you know, they're gonna take away my social distance. <laughs> I don't like it. I do like the option. <laughs> Rogers, thank you, man, for being on the show today. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, yeah, better late than never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I apologize for that. Oh, that don't worry about it. It, it, it happens all the time. <laughs> I'm offering, uh, listen, and I can just to make it up to you, I'm going to offer you a discount on any tickets. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 10% discount. You. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about a discount on your? Oh, how about a discount? Really how about a discount on your attorney services? <laughs> <laughs> I don't control that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working at a large firm, so I don't, I don't you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm a. I'm a. Um, what you told. Let, let me give right. you. Let me give you a quick plug for your attorney uh, gig as well. No, what, no, no, no. So this is, we don't need that. You don't need that. Okay. All right. We'll no, just, no, no, no. I, I try. I try to keep this thing separate. You know. So, okay. Um, we'll, we'll just we'll just say you're you're a smart, intelligent guy. Besides being a rock star, how's that? <laughs> well, well, hire me, and you can find out for yourself. Okay. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Rogers, for being on the show, man. I, I enjoyed All it. Right, man. All right, take it easy, man. All right, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For more information about Roger Stevens and Blind Melon, visit www.blindmelon.com, their official website. Also on Facebook, www.facebook.com backslash blindmelon. They're on Twitter, of course, www.twitter.com backslash blindmelonban. Uh, www.instagram.com blind melon band and also on Facebook it's www.facebook.com backslash blind melon band I forgot to add the band on to that uh, very special thanks to Keith Isola of Six Line Management LLC for arranging this interview with Roger Stevens if you have comments suggestions for the show you can always contact me at interviewing the legends at gmail.com and please please subscribe to my youtube channel interviewing the legends with ray shasho for the very latest interviews it's real news 
And of course, my new book, best-selling book, entitled The Rockstar Chronicles, Series 1. Currently working on 2 and 3. Chronicles, Truths, Confessions, and Wisdom from the Music Legends that set us free. You can order your copy today. It's a collector's edition, beautiful, beautiful hardcover um, edition. You can also get it on ebook. And it's available at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. It features over 45 intimate conversations with some of the greatest rock legends the world will ever know. Some of them are not with us anymore, so it's, you know, uh, be good to, you know, see, hear their thoughts and uh, what they were all about and the history of them. And uh, a lot of them uh, passed away just uh, a little while after I did the interview with them. So it's, it's, it's history in the making. Uh, book review gave it, uh, book review by Literary Titan gave it five stars. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. Take care. Bye-bye now.